the very famous article on grounded theory research by Corbett and Strauss may be a bit too specialized and difficult at this early stage of your development of professional research method skills and strategies, but it's a great article and one that you should read and digest as you matriculate through the online BA in sociology program. It introduces ideas and concepts for qualitative research that you can explore in later research methods and in substantive courses. Social science research methods fall into two broad categories, qualitative and quantitative. The biggest difference is that one type, quantitative, tests hypotheses by collecting and analyzing data using statistical tools and a pre-designed organizational plan. The other type, qualitative, often begins with observational data or ethnography. In qualitative methods, the emphasis is placed on systematic organization of details and on objectivity in collecting and organizing the data or information about people in groups and in their behavior. Good and lively writing is especially important in qualitative research since the investigator must narrate an interesting and factually accurate story. The slide shows the various types of qualitative and quantitative research and the differences in style or method. Grounded theory has its roots in pragmatism. The procedures and canons for grounded theory provide a solid foundation on how to organize a research project using observational or other qualitative research data. The strategy has its roots in the early Chicago school, especially the work of Dewey and Mead. It provides a systematic bridge for bringing the rigor of quantitative methods, the scientific method, to qualitative research. It begins with situating the research in a framework or a set of premises. The environment, social or natural, is always changing. Actors have some control over their outcomes in terms of how they respond to the changing conditions. It's all about processes and our observations allow us to create hypotheses about relationships and then to proceed based on these. In observational research using grounded theory, the data collection and analyses are interrelated. This is very different than quantitative research and sampling. In quantitative research, the investigators deliberately collect most of their data prior to beginning systematic analyses. In grounded theory research, concepts are the basic units of analyses. They emerge from observations of raw data. Related concepts are then grouped into categories. Theories about the categories inform later sampling or later observations of behavior. Hypotheses are developed for conceptual relationships among categories. Theoretical memos and note-taking bridge coding processes, notes, and the final written product. This is an example of the development of categories and one that is you can find in the article by Corbin and Strauss. The category is keeping illness under control. The direct observations, bathing, shaving, and eating breakfast with rest periods in between, inform the development of the concept pacing. Pacing, watching diet, and self-medicating are all concepts that come under the category of keeping illness under control. The category interpersonal conflict in the work setting actually comes from a student paper from the fall of 2012. The direct observations, raising one's voice, commanding or bossing co-workers of equal status, shaped the concept bullying. Bullying 
impudence, and abuse are concepts that inform the category of interpersonal conflict in the work setting. In grounded theory, again, the sampling begins with an observation, but then the researcher selects based on theories or hypotheses about the observations. As concepts and categories emerge, these inform future observations or future, in quote, sampling. So what are the criteria for these categories? How do we sample future behaviors that expand on the behavioral examples and concepts that are under the umbrella of the category? What conditions might give rise to an increase or decrease in behaviors and concepts in the category? And most important, how do we develop codes for present and for future use? Observational research does seem easy until we parse through the veneer. A keen eye, a clear analytic mind, and good writing are tough skills, but these are skills well worth developing.